Welcome to Inspire Happenings. I'm Missy and today I'm showing you how I created this three-tiered Kingdom Hearts cake. For my son's 17th birthday party, he asked me to make him a Kingdom Hearts cake with his two favorite characters on it. Here is a picture of the sketch I made of the cake and I thought it would be fun to try something new so I made the center tier smaller than the top and the bottom tiers. If this is not your thing, you can always make the center tier the same size as the other two. Totally up to you though. After frosting both of my 8 inch round cakes, I used four of my wooden dowels that I sharpened and measured about a one and a half inches from this side all the way around and pushed them into my cake at that mark. The reason I'm going so far in is because I need to make sure that the dowels will be hidden by the smaller cake above and that the dowels are going to be carrying all the weight from the heavier tier on top of the smaller tier. You will still need to do this even if your middle tier is not smaller. You can just go a little bit further out if you would like. After cutting all of my dowels down, I frosted over them so that my buttercream still acts as an adhesive when I place my next tier on top. As you can tell, I have already covered my second tier with black fondant. I will leave a link in the description to my tutorial on how to do this if you are interested. I added four more of my sharpened dowels to this tier as well, but making sure they go through both bottom tiers and avoiding the first four dowels underneath. So basically these dowel rods are longer than the first set because I'm pushing them through two tiers instead of just one. I then placed my final tier on top and pushed a dowel all the way through all three tiers. Please ignore my mess behind the cakes. I just wanted to show you how cool it looked here. One thing I want to know is you're going to want to place your first layer on its final resting place before stacking. This was so hard to move all three cakes without dumping them. Luckily, Hubby came to the rescue and everything stayed together perfectly. Moving on to one of the templates that I used, I will link all of them up in the description box below. I removed the bottom portion of his face because I only wanted his eyes and hair. I cut out a piece of fondant into the shape and skin tone of my template and put it aside. I cut out each eye, placed them on a piece of rolled out white fondant and cut around them eyelashes and all. I then remove the outside portion of each eyeball and begin cutting the eyeballs out of blue fondant. I use the larger end of my tip number 12 to cut out two perfect circles and then center them onto the leftover template to line them up and then adhere them with water. I use the smaller end of my tip number 12 to punch out two black circles and adhered them to the center of each eye. I rolled out some brown fondant and applied the pieces with water around the edge of each of the eyes. To adhere the eyes to the face as perfectly as possible, I lined up my template to the fondant underneath and then I applied the eyes onto each of the openings with water. For his catch light, I just added a little white sprinkle with some piping gel off to the side a little on each eye. I then applied some water to the back of the face and stuck it to the bottom edge of the top tier. For the eyebrows, I just shaped some more of that brown fondant as close as I could to the eyebrow in the photo and then applied them to the face by kind of eyeballing it after quickly removing the template. You could also cut out the eyebrows from the template and line them up that way too. Honestly, I was just being a little lazy on that one. Now onto his hair. For the pieces that are falling down along his forehead, I just cut out some triangular shapes with a rounded edge and applied them to his face with water. For the rest of his hair, I cut out some shapes that looked like leaves, some that looked like a straight edge triangle, some that were really long and pointy, and then I tried to lay them onto the template in places that looked most like the hair I cut out. Once I was happy with the amount of spiky hair I created, I pushed a toothpick about one third of the way through some of the chunks of hair and left them to air dry overnight. The next day, I pushed each of the chunky sections strategically along the top and sides of the cake tier until the whole front end of the tier was covered. And he is done. 
I followed all of the same steps for the bottom tier for the face, but for his hair, I used the template to create sort of a base for his hair to sit on since I wanted his hair to have more of a straighter texture. I didn't want the flesh toned fondant underneath to show through his strands. So I just rolled out some grayish fondant to create his strands of hair and applied them strategically around his face, leaving some pieces to fall around his eyes. Moving on to the logo, I removed the logo from my printout and adhered it to the gray fondant with water. This part is obviously not edible, so you will need to remove it before eating your cake. I then used my cutting tool to cut around the outside of the logo. Once it was completely done, I applied some water to the back and centered it to the black tear and pressed it into place. I dropped little green dots onto the border of the bottom tier and the bottom edge of the top tier. The green dots are supposed to signify the HP orbs. Finally, the key blades. I removed the two key blades from the printout and then I did the same thing as I did with the logo, applying the key blades to the fondant with water and then added some water to the back of each one before applying them to each side of the logo. I chose to create the keychain pieces out of fondant, but you can certainly use just the paper template if you are pressed for time. I made these by cutting out a thin strip of gray fondant and then using the smaller end of my cake boss tip number six, I popped out little holes along the center of the strip. I then went and sort of pushed half my tip along the edge of the fondant and dragged it out a bit along both sides of the strip. I used my cutting tool to push in the jagged parts a bit and then cut it down to the length of my keychain on my template. I applied each of the keychains with water and began working on the end pieces. For Mickey's head, I used my tip number 12 for the head and my Cake Boss tip number 6 for the two ears. And since I couldn't find something just the right size for the ears, I started small and then pressed in on the tiny dots until they were the size I needed. I applied the pieces on separately at the base of the keychain with water and a toothpick to line everything up. For the heart, I cut around the heart template onto red fondant, removed the red layer from the template, and then cut out the black portion out of black fondant. I stuck them together with water and then onto the cake with water. Finally, I pushed down each of the spiky ends to the green dots and my son's Kingdom Hearts cake was done. This cake was definitely fun to make and it was adventure trying something new with a different size tier stacked up on top of each other. But the best part was that my son loved it and what could be better than that? Thank you guys so much for watching. If you make this treat, please tag me as I love seeing all of your awesome creations. To subscribe, you can click here on my icon and be sure to check back here often because sometimes I post more than once a week. I love you guys and I will see you next time. Bye bye!